Michael Malice. She is on the floor as the Seminoles L2. And away she goes. And a dump out of the middle. You always have to keep an eye on the setter, and Annie Antar is as good as they come in the A-Sun. Annie Antar is so aggressive offensively. That's her 31, her 31st kill of the season. So North Florida is on the board first. And there's a service ace. Emma Pullman. Freshman from Birmingham, Alabama. She'll serve it in again. Right side, Snyder with the kill. I love that swing from Snyder coming off the gates, not acting like a freshman, very aggressive, doesn't look like there's a ton of nerves there. Nice sharp angle swing. Serving for the seed, number two, Annie Holtquist. Annie Holtquist, the starting Libro for the Seminoles today. Steps back to serve. And on the touch call, that'll be a kill for the Ospreys. Kirsten McFall is on the scoreboard. Kirsten McFall, a very efficient attacker, hitting 366 on the season. Has recorded as many as 18 kills this season that came against South Florida. And there's a service error, so a service ace and a service error to this point for the Ospreys, who lead by one. And in steps Angelia Drascovich. Florida State employs a 6-2 offense. She's joined by the freshman Kenna Phelan. Nice pass. And that is offense to perfection. Natty Boyd on a tight slide puts it down for the kill. It's a great swing down the line by Natty Boyd. You can see her on the slide. Nice quick set. And then the block wasn't able to get close in time. And that is the advantage of the fastest set. The last time the Ospreys came into this building, Matty Boyd hit 462, seven kills on 13 swings, and a huge block for North Florida. It's all going the Ospreys' way early. Matty Boyd, a great block, a great eye sequence lined right up in front of Kiari Roby and pressed her hands over the net and got the block. That's her 32nd on the season. Teamed up with Mahalia White for the double block. And a high swing, out of play, no touch call. And that'll be an attack error for Kylene Colomau on a timeout by the Seminoles. Florida State hitting a negative early on in set one, while the Ospreys are perfect from the floor and lead by four. Your pick. I select Victor Winbenyama. Ma? I'm taking Donovan Mitchell. Sabrina. Let's get it. Get it! Check! And I'm taking Kobe. Now with two times the vitamin D. Whatever your business needs, Vistaprint can print it. Yeah, Vistaprint. Like Rachel needed fun packaging. So Vistaprint designed and printed new stickers, tape, and thank you cards. Bye. Corley and Ducky needed to get their brand out there. So they printed new t-shirts, bottles, and caps. And Tasha, well, she needed a total refresh. So Vistaprint made her a new logo. And that, 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 all that. Because with Vistaprint, the printabilities are endless. Print it all with 25% off for new customers at Vistaprint.com. This is a customer. Hello. It's what happens when marketers group customers with very different behaviors. 
into one tangled mess. This is a mess. With MailChimp, marketers can use real-time behavior data to personalize every email for every customer, turning customers into customers. Intuit MailChimp, the number one email marketing and automation platform. Has a winning record in conference play over the last three straight seasons in the Atlantic Sun. The longest streak since North Florida joined the D1 ranks. Also, for a period of time, coached the beach volleyball team. But she told me before the match, Madison, she said, look, I really want to win a championship on indoor. She said, so focusing on indoor, my husband's taken over the beach volleyball team and scheduling tough like we've done this year are all things that are going to allow me to build something sustainable inside. Exactly, and you have to respect that decision from her. Beach volleyball is a really fun sport, but it's very different from indoor. And having the ability just to focus on indoor is definitely gonna help her team. It's been going their way since the start, and Annie Antar has been terrific. Whether she's been setting her pins or calling her own number, two kills already for the setter. I love it so much. I love when a setter is active from the beginning. Just a nice little dunk right into the opening court, and that does hold the blockers responsible. The blockers are now gonna be ready for that, and that'll open up her offense more. Audrey Koenig did not get the start for Florida State. Ella Gaona actually got the start in her place in the starting lineup. And so that's the first time we've seen Audrey Koenig today. And right on cue, first swing, first kill for AK. Audrey Koenig is the player that they go to the most. She leads her team in kills, 274 hitting percentage. There's an ace. Kiari Roby, the transfer in from the University of Oregon, an Elite Eight run a season ago. Hails from Atlanta, Georgia, moved closer to home this year. And has done a nice job for the Knowles and has been particularly strong serving. An ace and an overpass that Florida State cleans up. Sydney Conley on the right hand, getting the job done. It all starts with the serve. You get an aggressive serve and then that sets up your teammate, the overpass. Corey gets it, and then Conley finishing it, seeing the open court so well and swinging deep angle. Good run for the Knowles. We're back within one. There's a block. Audrey Koenig and Corey Lewis. Audrey Koenig does a very good job making sure she doesn't get tooled. Let's check out the replay. And that's okay. She got the block because she turned her paws into the court and didn't get to it. North Florida was looking for a touch call for a second. Amy Burkhart was hoping for it, but did not catch a Seminole hand. And just like that, the Knowles have their first leap. They're on a 5-0 run. And it all starts with the serve, a nice aggressive serve, making the Ospreys uncomfortable. Both teams siding out around 43% of the time. Tipped around the net, Corey Lewis saw an open spot on the floor. Kiari Roby, the server right now, leads her team in aces with, I think, 14 now. She started the game at 12, now she's gone up by two. It's such a flat, aggressive serve. And UNF's serve receive is not looking too strong at the moment. Both of these teams have struggled with their passing and their serve receive throughout this season. It's still early. That's a nice swing, though. Mahalia White tooling the block to put an end to the Knowles run. Mahalia White, 2023 A-Sun preseason player of the year. She's got over 1,000 career kills, so she's mature and a weathered, very experienced attacker. Second team all A-Sun a season ago led the Ospreys in kills, did White. That ball shanked off of Addie Holtquist's hands on serve received. That was easy pickings for the Ospreys, who cleaned that one up and put it down. It was Kirsten McFall ready for that. Nice, aggressive, put up a wall on the net. Her goal was to not let the ball come over, and she succeeded. Rocio Morrow back to serve. And Conan goes cross court. Audrey Koenig with a nice long approach, allowing all that power moving forward and then a deep angle swing in between the defenders.
defenders. Kenneth Phelan, the second setter in Florida State's 6 2 system, got the start, comes back in to serve. Koenig with the cut shot off the hands of McFall's block. Audrey Koenig so impresses me with her range and her manipulation over the ball. That is such a sharp angle to swing. And you see her hang time too. It's like she's floating in the air. And then just a quick little snap at the end there towards the sharp angle. Out to the left pin, Burkhardt off speed. Florida State's out of system. White had it rejected. The Ospreys keep it up. Burkhart now off the top of the block. Snyder looking for another kill. Morrow with a heads up play. Snyder had it dug up by Morrow. Over on two and cleaned up by Koenig. Koenig says thank you very much. Just a little scrappy overpass right into her hand. And she got that deep line swing. Here we have Snyder. What a good swing. Looked like the libero thought it was out and then it just popped up. Koenig ready for that, playing some cleanup at the net. So both teams playing clean up volleyball. Hasn't necessarily been the cleanest volleyball, but Chris Poole's seen a lot of it in his career. 900 Division I wins in his 16th season. The second, um, the second most amongst active D1 coaches, second only to Mary Wise, who came in here in the midweek. And Florida State gave the Gators one heck of a match, pushed them to the literal brink, and really a clear exhibition of what the Knolls can do and who they can be. Exactly. The Knolls have so many integral parts that are so strong. They're really good on defense, especially against Florida. They were able to dig Kennedy Martin, such a fantastic right side hitter for the UF Gators. They were, they were able to dig her up, and then Audrey Koenig had a fantastic game. So did both of Florida State's middle. You can see how strong their individual parts are, their individual parts are, and now it's just about putting it all together, feeling confident, and getting momentum. Also in the mix in that conversation, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Angelia Droskovic in a 6-2 system recording a double-double, something like 26 assists and 12 digs in that match against the number three team in the country. Unsung hero in that effort for the Knowles, without a doubt. Here's her center counterpart, Kenneth Beal, and the youngster from Fayetteville, Arkansas. And that's a service error. And that's what you want to do with the timeout. You call the timeout to, to um, what is that phrase? Ice, ice the kicker. Ice the kicker. Ice the other team, and it worked right there. It, it works more often than not. Puts an end to Florida State's 3-0 run. Here's Kelly Negron out of Puerto Rico. And that drops in for an ace serve. Perfect spot by Negron. That deep serve is really hard to serve receive. You've got to quickly backpedal and get that up. But when it's so close to the line, sometimes you think it's out. Florida State this time. The connection on the back set to Corey Lewis. For Lamont, dug that one up. Florida State's going to have to send not quite a free ball, but it's not their best one over. McFall looking for a touch call. Will she get it? No, and there might be a challenge card coming. Yep. As I was saying it, Coach Wright was looking for it. Coach Wright seemed pretty confident that there was a touch on that ball. And so Kip Wisham will head to the monitor. Our referees this afternoon, Joya Teeter, Kip Wisham, working the lines, Kara Tadlock, and Patrick Finan. We'll review the challenge rules in the NCAA. Each team begins with two if the call is reversed. They retain that challenge. If the original call is upheld, they lose it. They get an extra one in the bid set if they don't already still have two. So it's not to exceed two. And everybody wearing that matte black and light blue color came away saying that it was touched and they might have a case. That is a close call. You see the Corey Lewis just a little late to close that block. She's just reaching. Maybe it got Koenig's right. Fingertips. I'm not sure from this angle. I think that first angle might have been the best one. I'm not sure. There's a whole host of angles, but between the two, I think that first one was a little better than this one in terms of determining whether or not. Boy, that's 
You I'm, said it. It's, it's close. That's a close call. <laughs> wow. And it's got to be indisputable video evidence to determine whether or not a call gets overturned. Now, there's no question whether or not this ball was in or out. Now, had that been closer as well, they could have looked at both to determine, do we think there's a touch? Yes or no? And if it still remains a point for Florida State, then they can assess whether or not the ball actually dropped in, which could also overturn it for North Florida's perspective. I just don't know if there's a video we've seen yet. And to be clear, our crew is fantastic. It comes out with some of the best angles there are. I don't know if there's one that's indisputable enough to overturn this call for what it's worth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna place, a, place a call right here. I think it stands. I agree with you. You're right, it has to be indisputable. And I don't think from those videos that we can totally tell. Kim Wisham's made her decision. And some of those angles we were looking at, she was also looking at. She also has access to a few more. But I'm one for one. Yeah, you are. Coach Wright not happy with that call. It was a smart challenge. It was really close. Florida State got a little momentum now. They were down at the beginning, then they grew some confidence, and now they're on a little roll. Had the call been overturned, it would have been a two-point swing. The service error by Gaona allows North Florida to strike right back. They're back within one, but keeping in mind two things. One, North Florida is down to one challenge for the balance of the match all the way until the fifth set in case they get there, then they would get another one back. Secondly, two-point swing that can be leading to this point just as easily as they're trailing by one. Emma Pullman set to serve it in. Emma Pullman, here's a little fun, fun fact about her. She's a DS here, but in high school just a year ago, she had 1,135 kills, 1,127 digs, and 239 aces. So she was a standout all-around player in high school. You like that for her, her prospects at the D1 level, working six rotations, somebody who can dig, somebody who can serve, somebody who can evidently swing. Exactly. if they're checking the rotations here, making sure everybody's in the right spot. Maybe, I mean, that is a common thing, especially in high school. Teams that are not as experienced are out of rotation a little bit. In college, you don't see it as much. And it's a little early in the set to be checking subs. Free ball to North Florida. White was rejected by Lewis. And there was nobody on that left pin to swing at that ball. That's just a miscommunication it's right there. The outside hitter came in for the stack, had a fantastic swing, didn't get out to her outside position in time. And the setter thought she was. Old push to serve it in. Well, Florida's jammed up. White. No touch call, point to the Knolls. And I think we're going to see Kaylee McKnight get involved a little bit more. She leads the team in kills with 145. 2023 UNF Invitational MVP. She's a huge part of this offense, and I think they're trying to warm her up here. I'll tell you what, Kirsten McFall is also warming up a little bit. One of the leading scorers for the Ospreys now, in fact, the leading scorer, her third kill on five swings. Yep, I love that set. It's a quick back set, not allowing FSU's block to get closed in time. Point to the Seminoles. That's such a good down the line swing by Maddie Snyder. There's a phrase, painting the line. She just painted the outside of the line with that swing. And when you can paint the line as a right side hitter, I think a lot of times we see them go cross court, but when they can power one down the line like that, 
That's taking it to another level. It definitely helps, too, that she's left-handed. She's got that nice cross-body swing. And that's a nice job on the service rotation for Florida State. And Jelia Draskovich dropping in the ace. Timeout once again by the Ospreys. I love the way Droskovich plays. Yes. She's an all-around player. She's such a consistent, mature setter. Sees the court really well, spreads out her offense. And then we also see her behind the service line, serving up aces when her team needs it. Such a great, aggressive float serve. And then her digs against the number three team in the country, Florida, were just outstanding. So she really does it all out there on the court. It's a Florida State team that, for all its struggles record-wise this year, has been one of the best offenses in the country to this point this season. And when you look at an offense, a lot of the attention goes to the hitters, whether they be the middle blockers, the opposites, the left hands, because they're the ones registering the kills. The ones engineering that offense are the setters. And Angelia Droskovich won a conference title at UMBC. She's as good as they come, and she's really paced these offensive efforts along with Kenna Phelan. And then you see right here on your screen, ACC rank for the Florida State Seminoles, as far as offense is concerned, is unparalleled. They're at first points per set, hitting percentage, assist per set, kills per set. I mean, they are so dominant offensively. It's whenever they get in trouble with the defense, with their first touch contact, that their offense struggles. But when they've got eight system balls, they put that ball away. Certainly have, and they've been doing a better job of it here of late at Lucy McDaniel Court and Tully Jim. If you're just joining us, welcome Sean Davis and Madison Fitzpatrick, Kylie Brennan, the third member of our crew on hand for you this afternoon as the Ospreys take on the Seminoles and Angelia Droskovich, fresh off the service ace in the North Florida timeout, gets it back underway. McKnight rejected by a tip. Sydney Conley says no ma'am. Sydney Conley, a senior, obviously a really mature blocker. There she delayed. She delayed her block. She jumped a little late. They could see the tip coming. And all it takes is a little tap back. And UNF not that good at covering so far this game. Florida State, by contrast, now hitting nearly 400 in this opening set. There's a nice response right out of the middle. And once again, it's Maddie Boyd, her second kill now on three swings. I think it's also important to note that Maddie Boyd played in every single set and match last year. She's obviously one of their go-tos. Such a long swing, and she contacts that ball at such a high point. In 324, the season ago, that ball might have been pancaked. Everybody on the North Florida sideline jumped too, but it did hit the floor, says Joya Teeter, the up referee. And as a defender, you really want to be quicker with that ball. You want to see Conley going up to tip reading that she dropped her elbow, and then you want to crash in to dig that, but UNF not really registering that. Service error, and a point to the Ospreys. They've led by as many as four. They currently trail by that many. Florida State with three service errors to one for their counterparts from UNF. Boy, that was close, but it's a service error. If you're gonna make the service error, that's the one you can live with. Heavy, hard, in the seam, just barely going over the end line, at least from this angle is what it looked like. But at this point, too, late in the set, trailing by a handful, you can ill afford a service error. Exactly, I say it all the time, it's a fine line. You're walking on a tightrope, you wanna be aggressive, but when you're down by this much, you need to get it in. That one got inside the block. Mahalia White beating Corey Lewis. That's a fun matchup right there. Corey Lewis just not pressed enough over the net. Mahalia White powered it through. Florida State has entered their red zone, leading by four. Good coverage by Phil Mount. Conley cross court. Picked up well. That was the center, Annie Antoft. Koenig charging in. And that ball is down. Point to the Norse. You can tell a good hitter from a not as good hitter. From that body control that she has, it's an out-of-system set coming from the back line from Maddie Holt. 
twist. And she just stays behind it, powers through, and creates enough spin that it lands before the Libero can get up. Five kills hitting 833 in this match for Audrey Cohen. She had a swing like that against Florida in the middle of the week. She did so good against Florida, I believe. 14 kills. Definite leader of the offense. Hit her season high in percentage. And Mahalia White is really starting to pace this club. Three kills, six swings, hitting 333. Mahalia White has pops. She gets up there. Hard swing to breathe. This is the take. Kind of feeling went up to rescue it. And Florida State will be called point to North Florida. Feeling reaching up and over the net as a back row setter. That's a no no. I actually think they're calling their middle over the net. Okay. It's hard when you have a back row setter to differentiate between what the call is, but the middle was over. Ella Gayona just send it in. Nick Fall. Nice cross body swing from Mick Fall to the open area of the court, deep angle. Nice quick set. She runs behind the setter, trying to get Corey Lewis off balance. And it worked where Lewis not able to track her shoulder. And then Mick falls to that deep corner. North Florida's middles have nearly half the kills in this first set. Kathleen Filamawa. And here's some positives from those errors from Kylie Filamawa. She's being aggressive. She is so powerful. You can tell when that swing gets on, it's going to be on. She just has to work into it. And as a freshman, you see that a lot of the times. The lead for the moment down to three for Florida State. They call timeout. North Florida starting to apply a little more pressure here toward the end of this set. Madison, I want to go back to something that Lindsay Allman told us coming off of the Georgia tournament. She said that finishing strong leading into the season and that weekend was an identity piece for the Seminoles. They've struggled with that here ever since, really. It's almost like she was the jinx in saying so. Yeah. For North Florida and for Florida State, what's it going to take here in a match that is so pivotal for both to close out this first set strong and set a tone for this match? I think it's short-term memory. You forget the matches before. You forget that you're on a three or a two-game losing streak. And you get back to what you do well. You clean up the first ball touches. You go back to whatever identity you think that your team has. And you lean into it. One more kill for North Florida. Then to Florida State. 11 to 10. The Knolls hitting at a cleaner clip. 333 to 222. Florida State's block a little more active. Two to one. It's really just been those errors to this point that have made the difference between the Ospreys and the Seminoles. A couple more for North Florida, and Florida State leads by three. Back underway, late set one. Snyder with the kill. And I think we have to credit that to Kenna Phelan, just a freshman setter. But a two-time Arkansas Gatorade Player of the Year. Look at that, just back set, pushing it all the way to Maddie Snyder's left arm. Kenna feeling so versatile and so dynamic. She's going to be a real good player for a real long time for Florida State. Annie Antar looks to take it over on two. The Knolls sniffed it out. They've seen it a couple times already. McFall off the top of the block. Holtquist charges in and got underneath it. Tight pass, McFall on the slide. Done over and out, point to the Ospreys. It's a great swing by McKnight. She waited there on the outside. The middle got set a few times. They weren't really connecting middle to setter. She just waited out there and got the kill. Riley Moorhead will check in here late in set one for the first time. Tight situation, down three. Oh, 
Roby off the top of the block. McKnight, the hot hand for the Ospreys, played up by Holquist. Falamala off the top of the block, kept alive, and now rejected by Snyder. Florida State now has set one. And it all started with that aggressive swing from Kylie Falamala. I will say, sorry, but Batty Snyder, who just got the block, is third on the team in total blocks with 15. So as a freshman, she's putting up big numbers. And also hitting four and seven in this match alone. 571, strong first set for Florida State's freshman opposite. It's been a strong season to this point for Angelia Draskovich. She gets it back underway. And that's a nice effort by Maddie Boyd. She has been strong. Really, North Florida's middles have done a terrific job here in the first set. North Florida's middles have been the ones converting for points the most. And I think it's because that center hitter connection is really good. It's a really fast set. That slide, sometimes you see hitters like a little higher set on the slide, but Maddie Boyd runs a really fast slide. And she's able to get the kill. Ospreys need a run. Florida State needs a side out. Roby on the attack. Morrow dug it up. Off speed in the antenna and first set to the Knolls. They win at 25 20 on the left hand, moving back to the position she was recruited to. Addie Holt was now the lead row for the Knolls. Back underway here in set two. Maddie Boyd with a big swing and a free ball back to North Florida. McKnight really heated up late in set one. That's an attack error. The Knolls are on the board first. McKnight has a really nice cross-body sharp swing. From the right side, sometimes it's hard to hit that angle, but she's really going for it there. Keona in to serve. Oh, what a smart shot. Florida State can only dig it back over the net. Another opportunity for the Ospreys down the line, and it misses it. McKnight was fired up, thought it was a kill. It's going to be a point to the Knowles. And we just talk about that running, diving dig from Kenna Phelan laying out. That's a Superman dive right there if I've ever seen one. That's a tight pass. McKnight cross court. Out of system ball. Snyder into the tape. And there's a point for the Ospreys. So that goes Kaylee McKnight. Player who leads North Florida in kills this season, drops in the eighth serve. That's and when, a great serve. And when you rattle off that line, leads the team in kills, and it's her fellow outside hitter, Mahalia White, who was picked as the preseason player of the year in the A-Sun, speaks to the kind of season that McKnight is having at this point. Oh boy, Kylie Filamala rocketed one right through the seam, and I think she's lobbying that that was either in or it was touched. Florida yeah. State wants a touch call. Chris Poole's coming out asking who touched it, who touched it. I saw that. And you know, it is hard going from that libero position, just getting into the swing of things, pun not intended, of being a front row attacker again. Pun not intended or kind of? It should have been intended. It wasn't, but honestly, that was funny. Well played. I'll give you props for it anyway. Thank you. If you're just joining us, welcome Sean Davison, Madison Fitzpatrick, Kylie Brennan, the third member of our crew on hand here. Florida State winning set one over North Florida 25-21. And there is a big block for the North. The block has come along early in this match for Florida State. They've been getting quality block touches all year, haven't really been putting blocks down, but so far, pretty good. And that's because the anchors of the blocking are Corey Lewis and Kiari Roby. And I think that was Kylie Lamawa got some major jumps, just presses her arms over the net and the ball goes straight down. She is going to have an interesting stat line. There's a pancake by Phillip out. Digs, kills, blocks, you name it, she'll do it all this year. Might be double contact on the set, a whistle before a swing. Either that or somebody was in the net. Either way, it's a point for the Knowles. And these are the 
these are just sloppy errors from UNF. They have to clean it up. I understand you lose a set. You kind of still have that in the back of your mind. It's easier to err. But you got to have short-term memory. I say it all the time. Neither team playing particularly great in the set. Both, in fact, hitting a negative. Florida State negative 250. And we'll see where the number goes. That's a fourth attack error. No kills for North Florida on eight swings. So that'll be negative 500 to this point in this set for the Ospreys. Not something you want to see, and it all really does start with the pass. The serve receive has kind of been off the net, forcing the setters to be uncomfortable. Back row attack, McKnight. There you go, that'll spark a little offense. And with more on McKnight, here's Kylie Brennan. Um Absolutely. So I got to talk to Coach right before the game who mentioned that Kaylee McKnight is a player who's really mature, especially in the era of shopping for players in the portal. She is someone who is loyal, dependable, great volleyball IQ, and does not let parts of her game bleed into one another. Great separation. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Kylie. And it's been a struggle for McKnight, generally speaking, to this point. Separated it well with quality back to attack. And then speaking of quality, Maddie Snyder. Holy quality is right. Maddie Snyder. Such a good set by Kenna. She puts her right on the net. Snyder timed that out so well, waited on her approach, then sped into it. And the Ospreys middle blocker not expecting Kenna Phelan to back set that ball. And that's what makes her so good. She's so deceptive. And Angelia Drascovich steps back in. Another strong serve by the young lady they call Jelly here with the Knowles. Big dig by Holtquist, joust at the net. Droskovich over the back set, and Villamalo finds the floor. Great set by Droskovich, pin to pin, back bump set. That's not an easy thing to do. You have to have great court awareness. And then Kai with her first kill of the night to the deep corner. They call her Jelly. I would submit that she is the glue of this Florida State team. She serves it in again. It's another strong serve. And that's another attack error by North Florida. I mean, you're just seeing what the difference is between in-system volleyball allowing for clean three-point passes and what is going on specifically on North Florida side of the net. They're out of system. They're swinging at balls that are not in the right place. And they're trailing by five as a result. Exactly. It all starts with the pass. If you can get the pass to the setter, a nice clean first contact that allows her to use every single weapon she has on offense. Better effort there. White tips it over the block. Roby just hammers it down. It has been all goals early in set two. I love that swing from Roby and I love that set from Droskovich. That's a, called a three. Weaving it in between those two blockers. It's too quick. And just taking advantage of, advantage of that sharp angle of the outside hitter not coming into block. Florida State leads this set by six in a match that both likely feel they have to have. And it's worth mentioning, the Knolls on this 4-0 run. They want a point to kick it off. The last three have been on Angelia Droskovich's serve, and they have all been really strong. Ones. Exactly. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but Droskovich's full game. Her digs in the back row, her aggressive float serves, her setting, her ability to spread out her offense. As we saw before, her back set, her back bump set, that is a, not an easy set. Well, the journey for Droskovic to Florida State began in Serbia, and she left home as a preteen to pursue volleyball in the States. It's a journey that took her to UMBC, and last year paced the club, ran the offense well in a 6-2 setup with Ava Pitchford. But wow, to leave home at 11, and we're not talking about leaving your hometown of Orlando to go to Tallahassee, which I did when I was 18, and that was daunting enough. Serbia to the United States to pursue volleyball. She has aspirations of going pro, and she's got the game to do it. Exactly. You have to love the game of volleyball to make that big of a move, and it really does speak to her passion for the sport. So we'll see if she can keep a good thing going here, serving the ball. Three, again, really strong serves that have continued this onslaught against the Ospreys. 
And once again, they're jammed up on serve received. This time off the block, knocked around. Philomelo crashes in. Everybody's out of system. That one's dug up. That might have been out, and Holtquist went for it. I think so. I think that was out. You have to appreciate Holtquist as a libero going for it, but her teammates in that scenario need to be screaming at her out, out, out. So the lead is down to five. The Ospreys get their much needed side out. And there's that in-system pass. There's the contrast right there. Exactly, and an in-system pass also allows you to speed up your offense. Look at this quick set. And Sydney Conley can hit every single area of the court. Nice down the line swing. That is not an easy area of the court to hit as a right side attacker and a right handed attacker. Antar over on two. Conley this time had it rejected. The double block was ready. That was Amy Berghart on the block. She did a good job manning Sydney and just got the right side of her arm, her right arm, blocked it straight down. Amy with 10 blocks on the season now. Florida State with the edge in the block count in this match, three to two. Nice job on serve received there, out to the outside. It goes and Sky Eats checks in and is on the board. One of a number of options for the Knowles, who has now played in every position along the front row over her FSU career, outside, middle, and right. Yep, definitely. Welcome to the game, Sky Eats. That's her 31st kill. I'm excited to see what they do with her on offense. Like you said, she's been all over the place. Quick set right behind Annie Antoff. Kirsten McFall with a big swing and then an off-speed tip. Florida State really pouring it on here. Look at that. Droskovich crashes in to that seam. She could see that Corey Lewis didn't have the block totally all the way close, crashed into the seam, read the opposing hitter's shoulder, and just dug that ball straight up. Seven assists, two digs. Antar again looking to dump it on two. What an aggressive setter she is, and I believe we're gonna get a net ball against the Ospreys. They've just gotta clean up these little meaningless errors. Kaylee McKnight called for being in the net. And the Knowles are on a 3-0 run, another extended run for Florida State. As an overpass comes across. Droskovich off the back foot, sets Corey Lewis, now charges into set Eeks. McKnight. There's another kill for, for McKnight. Now we can see what McKnight can do when it's an in-system pass. A nice quick set. She's a little undersized as an outside, so she needs the speed coming into that approach to give her power behind her hit. And that was a great set for her to have all that speed behind. When you factor in all the different statistical categories that you can record in volleyball, they accumulate in a point statistic that we don't often reference, but she's fifth most in the A-Sun in cumulative points as Florida State sides out immediately to reestablish an eight-point lead. Sky Eek's a very powerful hitter and just was able to tool the block. The block jumped a little early and she caught the hands of the right side blocker on their way down. Two kills hitting 667. So two kills on three swings for Eek's who's really developed the repertoire. And really Lindsay Allman told us she has been particularly proud of how many games Sky Eek's has made in the back row. We haven't seen her rotate back there very often. But if Florida State feels like they need her back there, then they feel confident they can get some good stuff out of there as well. Exactly, it's good to have options. Back on the attack, Eek, she's been the hot hand. There's another kill for Sky. And now you can see the Seminoles having fun with it. They're loose. They're recording kills. UNF is playing a little sloppy. Florida State pretty dominant this set. Now you can see they're starting to have some fun. Florida State leads it 16 to 7 as Ken Phelan checks in to relieve Angelia Droskovich. Center always in the back row for the Knowles, and that kill is down just outside of the freshman center's reach. That's Maddie Boyd. She loves that cross-body swing. Nice 
nice quick set. She was going for that deep corner. You can see Florida State plays pretty shallow defense. And Maddie Boyd just hitting a little too deep for Kenna to dig up. Speaking of shallow, short serve there floats in beautifully. Snyder off the top of the block. And Maddie Snyder has paced Florida State. I don't know if she can believe it, but she should. Look at Maddie Snyder being so dynamic. She's a right side hitter coming in, hitting that quick middle set, hitting 400. 455 to be specific for Snyder. The Knowles have doubled up the Osprey. Set two right themselves on the video boards. So that's the collective chuckle that you're seeing on your screen. But it's been no laughing matter that the Knowles are the only ACC team with four players totaling 80 or more kills to this point this season. That's Corey Lewis, Audrey Koenig, Audrey Rothman, and Kiari Roby. And that also speaks to the setters spreading out their offense so well. Quick set to the middle. Oh my goodness, Maddie Boyd just hammered it home. How about the set though? So the setter impresses me immensely. Andy Antar, 377 assists coming into this game. She had a standout freshman season, then had to redshirt, and now is back and obviously better than ever. Back to the action, Kyrie from about a pot to take the road out of play. And so the youngster who hasn't swung very much this season still feeling things out. You mentioned the tremendous match last weekend. Try to see if that if that game travels. It will. It will. But quick turnaround and all kinds of chaos going on with injuries and illnesses and you name it. She'll figure it out. Somebody who already has Corey Lewis. Look at that smile from Corey Lewis. The setter hitter connection between Kenneth Phelan and Corey Lewis is so on. It is so fluid. The timing is so good. And that's why Corey Lewis's hitting percentage is, I believe, 13th best in the country right now. She's always been incredibly efficient ever since she got here to Florida State. Phil Amala trying to hammer the overpass like the thought there. There's a huge block. Guess who? Maddie Snyder checking in with Layla Enzai. Maddie Snyder, there's no question why. She's third on the team in total blocks. Lining up so good on that setter shoulder, timing that out right. Set that block nicely for the middle to come in and close it. Welcome to the match, Layla Enjai. First action, she records a block. That time tipped over her hand. Philomau looking for a touch ball. Got it. Philomau really wanted that touch ball. You don't want to error that much in a game. And she's, she hits at such a high point over the net, she's able to grab some fingers. Second most swings of anybody on Florida State's roster at this point in the match. Speed tip, cleaned up. Maddie Boyd with a smart shot got Florida State scrambling. She cleaned up the overpass herself. Maddie Boyd ne never took her eyes off that ball. You can see her tracking it. Just a quick little jump and a tip over Maddie Snyder's head. Six kill in the set for North Florida. Maybe a service ace and back to Ruby. We've been speeding toward the intermission. The Ospreys showing some resistance here as Rocio Moro goes back to serve. Already four aces in the match for the Ospreys. And Jai out of the Kill for number 12 in White Amy Burkhardt. You see right here, oh, what a set. And then Annie Burkhardt just turning that ball down the line. Look at her teammates fired up. That's what UNF needs. They need someone to step up and take control of this game. I think I said 12 and white. I promise you folks at home, I know the difference between white and black. <laughs> 
It was a kill off somebody in white. Give yep. me that. Yep, yeah. There we go. There's white on the court somewhere. <laughs> At least you got that. <laughs> I got her name right. They're on a 3-0 run as well. This is a North Florida team that checks into this matchup as number five in the A-Sun preseason poll. They finished seventh in the A-Sun a season ago. Lost some key players from that 2021 team that was the best in program history. And what a team that was, again, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, both wins, really did a great job in A-Sun play, knocked off some Power 5 opponents, including Virginia Tech. And so they're trying to build back to that point, and they really do think they've got the pieces and the ability to do that in this tough schedule they've played to this date. Playing a TCU team and a Georgia team that Florida State also played, as well as now playing the goals themselves, is really something they think could be a catalyst as they head into their conference slate. Exactly. You have to appreciate scheduling a really strong line of opponents. Iron sharpens iron. You're going to get better if you play those bigger girls, those bigger hitters. It can only help you, even if you lose. Six and six is not bad for how hard their schedule is. And so we'll see as the rubber meets the road and they transition from the Knolls into the A Sun. What the future holds for North Florida. There's still plenty of volleyball in this matchup, though. They trail by seven in set two. And we'll see if they can keep a rally going. They've already reeled off three in a row. Snyder on the right hand puts an end to that run. Maddie Snyder taking advantage of Kirsten McFall being late to close that block. Kenneth Phelan doing a really good job setting every single one of her attackers. And in steps in Jelly Draskovich. Nine assists, a couple of digs, a service ace, and a few more really strong serves that got North Florida incredibly out of system. They're in the system kind of there. They were jammed up, and Antar had to run the length of the court to get to that. Philomela finds the back court. Drostovich with that back buck set again, and then Philomela with a lot of maturity for being a freshman. You see pin to pin. Philomela really waited on that ball and then just right into that deep corner in between those two defenders. Seven digs for Kylie and Philomela. Droskovich with the service error. When you serve as strong as she does, as frequently as she does, as aggressively as she does, you're going to bring in some error. As long as you're one to one in terms of aces to errors, you can live with it, especially when you lead by eight. Exactly. I was going to say the one to one ratio. She's in the positive right now. Had a really big run in this game. A service error is okay when you're being as aggressive as she is. Negron back in to serve. And Jai with the tip out of the middle. And then a big swing from Kirsten McFall. Five Here's... kills for McFall. Mm -hmm. I was about to say that. See the great dig, quick set. Kirsten McFall not even back to do a full approach. She kind of just turned around, jumped. And that set was in such a good spot, hitting 366, fourth in the ace on right now. 11 kills on 20 swings for North Florida's two middles, McFall and Boyd. And Sydney Connelly continues to prove she's making it look easy. It feels like we haven't called her name a whole lot, but then you look at the box score, and all of a sudden she's got six kills on nine swings, hitting 556. She's a player where health has been the question mark. She's been banged up at points throughout her career, but her IQ is amongst the strongest on the team, according to her coaching staff. Yeah, you have to appreciate that. She's not the flashiest, but she gets the job done efficiently. And I'll tell you what, Florida State's entire bench was hopping for Layla Enjai. Doesn't play a lot, but made that one count. Enjai's on the board with a kill. It always feels good when you have a lead by enough points where you can put some bench players on the court and watch them shine. And she's going to put away the set. Layla Enjai with a couple of kills to close out set to 25-15. Knowles lead it two zip. At the intermission, we'll be back to talk some stats and set the scene in a few moments. Whatever your business needs, Vistaprint can print. It hasn't gone North Florida's way to this point, but sometimes stories are so much bigger than the scoreboard. And with more on a wonderful one for the Ospreys, here's Kylie Brennan. Yes, Mahalia White also dealing with Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer, dealt with a torn ACL, went through the COVID season, 
when Coach Wright talks about her, she says the words that come to mind are fierce and positive and that we all have something to learn with her, which goes great because after college, she actually wants to be a motivational speaker, inspiring all those around us. Back to you guys. Yeah, thank you very much, Kylie. In fact, diagnosed with stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma, missed 2021 due to an ACL injury, transferred from UC Davis to North Florida, was an all-conference second teamer last year on the backside of cancer and an ACL injury, and was named the preseason player of the year. For folks that would just think, oh, preseason player of the year, and you think, wonderful player, obviously so, that's only a drop in the bucket to the story that Mahali White has. Exactly, what an inspirational figure for everybody. I mean, the resiliency that Mah the Mahalia White has and if we're going to talk some volleyball stats, she's got over a thousand career kills on the court. So aggressive off the court. So resilient. I mean, what a good role model for everybody struggling. In fact, Mahalia White won the 2023 Honda Cup Inspiration Award for just that. What an inspirational figure, not just to her teammates and to volleyball players everywhere, but literally to us all for what she has done and what she has overcome and for standing on the floor like she is now and being the kind of student athlete person that she is. She'll look to spark this North Florida team here in set three. Been kind of quiet, but you never know. You got three sets to work with, you're not out of it yet. And North Florida's really gonna need to get this third set off strongly. What do you need to see out of them here to kick things off to really give them a chance as the set wears along? I really do think North Florida needs to step up their block. Let's go ahead and talk some numbers for Florida State's offense. They've got one, two, three, four, five players hitting over 500. Maddie Snyder hitting 500. Sydney Conley, 556. Audrey Koenig, 833. Sky Eats, 750. And Corey Lewis, 500. So if you're UNF, you need to do a better job at shutting down that attack. And so as we take a look at the cumulative stats through two sets, Florida State with nine more kills, hitting roughly 250 points higher than North Florida, four more digs, two more team blocks. Florida State in the second set hit 467, 18 kills on 30 swings with only four attack errors. It was a garnet and gold onslaught in set number two against North Florida. And I think on the backside of that, quality block touches, yes, for sure. And blocks that terminate points, absolutely for North Florida. But the passing's also got to be a lot better. They're getting annihilated on serve receive. Exactly. Florida State doing a really good job serving, serving us consistently and aggressively. But it all starts with the pass, and UNF not able to get those three passes, get those in-system passes. They've got a really, really solid setter. And she's just not able to set up her team for success right now. Annie Antar with 13 assists, had 16 assists a couple of years ago when the Ospreys last came to Tallahassee, already with 13 through the first three here today. He's called her own number a couple of times, two kills on seven swings, and we're back underway here in Florida's capital city. Lewis reaching for the high set, and North Florida will strike first. And I also want to point out we do have a libero change on the Florida State side. We got a freshman, Gayona, back there in the garden. Good point there. Ella Gayona checking into the Libro jersey. Addie Hope was still on the floor to start off the set, but as the DS. And there she is on serve receive. Free ball to North Florida. McFall has rejected. There's Kylie Villamala. I felt that swing in my heart. That was such a powerful slide. She really wanted that kill, but Philip Bauer with the perfect lineup, and really that, that's a solo block, and you can tell it's gonna be a good block by the way. She presses her arms over the net. It's like an, almost a full body crunch. Deep float by Ella Gayona is a service error, and North Florida is out in front here. Two to one, early goings in a set they must win here in set number three. Worth mentioning when we got this match started, North Florida just pummeled Florida State. They led 6-2, the Noles were hitting a negative. Chris Poole called a timeout. We took one as well, and then Florida State rallied on the back side of that, and then ran away with set two. But North Florida getting a couple of points on the board, 
despite the fact that Natty Snyder is looking unstoppable on the right pin while I'm trying to say something nice about the Ospreys. <laughs> I know, Natty Snyder makes it difficult. She sees that outside block and just turns that ball down the line. It really does help. She's ambidextrous. She can hit with both arms, but her left arm swings down the line so well. Hitting north of 500 as Angelina Drosnitz checks in with a float serve. Set to Yari Roby, and Roby puts that one down. Just the second kill in the match for Kiari Roby. Hasn't had her number called a whole lot, but has made an impact to be sure with more on Florida State's newest middle blocker. Here's Kylie. After dominant play at Oregon, Kiari Roby's transfer came as a surprise to some, but last week she told me she's extremely close to her family. Homeschooled up until senior year from Atlanta, Georgia. She was missing that feeling at home piece, and after only seeing her family once during her three years in the Pac-12, she says she feels at home here and she visits all the time. And specifically, Jelly Draskovich has made her feel validated in that decision. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Kylie. The drive from Tallahassee to Atlanta, depending on which way you go, roughly four to five hours, depends on traffic on I-75. Usually isn't all that great, but... <laughs> But much closer to home than Eugene, Oregon certainly is. And, and Jelly Adraskovich, I said it earlier, they call her Jelly, she's the glue. And she is also the player that a lot of these players of various ages, not just the young ones, look up to. Exactly. And you know, I also love her and Kenna Phelan's relationship. Coach Poole told us she took Kenna Phelan under her wing, is really ready to pass the torch to her when she's gone. And we almost just got pummeled over here. UNF showing their serve receive errors. I'll tell you what, we got a meet and greet with Annie Antar is what we got. Annie Antar really going for it. You have to appreciate it. She hit, she hit the table a little hard. Hey. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Sean Davidson, Madison Fitzpatrick. That was Annie Antar yeah. as we get back to the action here in set number three. She just wanted to say hi. <laughs> she knew we were coming on camera. She yeah. wanted to be on camera, too. <laughs> Nice pickup by Addie Holquist. Florida State scrambling, though. Philomala into the net. And I'll say this. Kylie Philomala here in set three looks more confident, looks more comfortable. Hammered an overpass just a couple of points ago, and she's really turning things up, even though that did not work out the way she would have wanted it to. Like we said before, it, it just takes a little bit, especially as a freshman. You were in the libero jersey for so long. It takes a little bit to just oil up the gears in your shoulder a little bit to convert some to kills, but that set was just a little too low for her. That ball's still up. Antar to the back corner, and Holmquist can't track it down. Antar with a deep left-handed tip to the back corner. She has such good court awareness, such good court vision. And that's her third kill of the night. She's hitting 375. Wow, from a setter, those are good numbers. Not often that we see setters call their own number that often into that kind of level of success, but she's certainly done so. Oh, what a smart shot by Sydney Conley, showing off that IQ her coaches talk about. Sydney Conley, so cheeky, so wristy, so hard to read because she mixes up that shot. Like you said, that IQ is there. She has such an arsenal on offense. And she lets the opposing team see all of it. I've seen cut shots. I've seen the little roll shot to the open court and the deep swings. There's a lot of clubs in the country that fall in love with setting their left pins, like Kylie Philomala, who just dropped in the ace. But try this one on for size, Madison. North Florida's middles are pacing their club. Florida State's opposites are leading theirs. Wow, that's actually, I wasn't expecting you to say that. That's very, very unique. Set goes to the middle, Maddie Boyd tips it off speed. Eats, my goodness, she's had herself today. And what presses me most from Eeks is the power behind that swing. She really waits on that approach, speeds up into it. Four kills on the night. She's hitting 800. Uh, that ball is coming at such a fast pace. That libero is just not quick enough to dig it up. Oh, what a serve by Phil Allen. Eeks again. Why not? Why not? It's right. Upping that hitting percentage. 
everything is working for Florida State. You're not really thinking about your gameplay that much. It's just all working. Florida State leading 10 to 4. Looking to close it out in three here at Tully Jack. Whatever your business needs, Vistaprint. Florida State would be North Florida's first over an ACC team since 2021. It would also be their first win over the Knolls in program history. Their third matchup ever against Florida State. Now the Knolls are trying to avoid their first four-game losing streak since before Chris Poole was the head coach here. That was the Todd Press era. Todd Press, who since did a tremendous job up at Fairfield University. Shout out to our longtime producer, Wyatt Dossie, who's up there. Got to work with him over the past weekend up there at Fairfield. And uh, the Stags are off to a 2-0 start in Mac play against the likes of Canisius and Niagara. Press himself has made the way out to San Jose State. Meanwhile, Kristen Wright's Ospreys are trying to trim into this lead. Eats with a big swing from the left pin. Mahaley White off the block. Roby with another quality swing. That's her third kill on six. A nice quick set from Joskovich. That's a three set. Roby with that sharp angle. Not a crossbody, just an angle swing. She kind of hit where she was facing, but she's got so much power and she hits it at such a high vantage point. And then she comes through with an ace serve in the seam. That's the best feeling. I say it once, I'll say it a million times. You get the kill, you go back and serve, you get the ace, you're feeling it at that point. Florida State with a positive ace to error ratio. Four aces in this set. And I'm gonna stop talking about serving. I think I'm gonna let you talk about it because I think every time I talk about it, either of these teams dumps one in the net or out of play. So I'm gonna let that be your thing. I don't wanna be the one to jinx them. I'm so sorry, I'm just not gonna talk next time. We just won't talk serving ever again. <laughs> Bold strategy, we'll see if it works. <laughs> Emma Pullman in to serve. Lewis out of the middle, Pullman trying to track it down, but can't quite do so. Lewis, her fourth kill of the night, hitting 500 because that's just what she does. Her hitting percentage is so high, she's so consistent. And it's because she's, she's just hitting over these opposing blockers. And she has such a flexible shoulder, she can really hit every area of the court, but she picks and chooses where she goes, and it's usually effective, hitting 500. Antar to the left pin, McKnight. And she gets it down for the kill. Kirsten McKnight with now her seventh of the match. And when you're that undersized, you have to go, you have to speed up your approach. You have to beat those blockers on the other side of the net. And that's what she does so well, is when she's working a fast offense. I was reading the box score. I combined Kirsten McFall with Kaylee McKnight's name. That was her fourth kill of the match. And there is a huge block for Cora Lewis, the solo stuff for number eight in white to go along with four kills on eight swings. Cora Lewis does such a good job. She's not really totally aligned right, but then she just presses her arms, diving into that angle. She reads that shoulder so well. Four kills, two blocks for Corey Lewis. And Hope steps in to serve. There you go. Mahalia White tooling the block. Mahalia White's strength is her power. Able to just power that ball through to tool the block. Ospreys desperately need a run. Trailing by six to the Knowles midway through set three. Lewis swinging away out of the middle, misses everything. Point to North Florida. You don't really see that misconnection that often between Kenneth Feeling and Corey Lewis, but that set just a little too low for Lewis. The Lamaua had to back up to swing at that one, but got it down for the kill. We've seen her grow leaps and bounds within the context of one match. And that's, this is the sign of her athleticism. She's a little early. It doesn't matter. She leans back and has a nice snap on the ball. That just shows you how athletic of an attacker she is. 
An aggressive serve by Ella Gaona is a service error for the Knolls. Gaona stepped in against Florida, had some big serves against the Gators, really burst on the scene in that match, and has been in matches here for Florida State pretty much ever since. Oh, nice pass there. But a huge block. Heavy and hard. She is such a leader on this team. Solo block. Her middle not able to get there and her just firing her team up. She's that consistent piece for the Ospreys. She has been a lot of fun to watch. That's the third block for North Florida in the match. The six for the Knowles. Overpass will be tried to hammer it down. And talk. Tight set to McFall. Snyder. Another kill for Maddie Snyder. Maddie Snyder leading the offense right now for the Seminoles with nine kills. Hitting over 500. Kind of, that pass was a little tight. It didn't matter. She's so athletic and dynamic. She set that ball right to Maddie Snyder, right off the net. And Snyder's really good when that set is tight because all she has to do is power through and snap her wrist. Oh, yeah, there you go. Much better pass. Quick set to the middle. And that was an outside hitter playing out of the middle. That's always fun to watch in Burkhart. We love a good stack. That was my favorite to swing. You're closer to the center. A lot of times you only have one blocker on you and you're able to come in with a tight set and rip the ball and that's exactly what Amy Burkhart just did. Four point third set, make it five. Every little point counts here always, but especially when you're trailing by this much and the entire match is on the line. Service error by Janelli Siopa. And Philomala sends it back to serve and goes back to serve once again. Plays that one up. She's got set her hands. And that one looked pretty good. There you go. I'll tell you what, North Florida is starting to find some rhythm here in this set, hitting around 300 in this set alone. I'm really liking the passion from North Florida. You can see it in, on all of their faces. They really want this. And the swing just right through that seat. Out of system set, but it doesn't matter. Set her so good, and she just weaves it through the right side blocker and the middle blocker. Three kills for Burkhardt in the match, two in the last three points. A couple of service errors, though, for North Florida have erased the ground they made up. They'll call time out. Exactly. Control what you can control. As a server, you control whether that ball goes in or not. And you really, really have to eliminate the, those errors nearing the end of this game. Nearing the end of this set, and perhaps also nearing the end of the match. So might as well take a look at the upcoming schedules for both the Seminoles and North Florida. For Florida State, they start off ACC play on the road at Virginia Tech and Wake Forest. Randy Smart and the Demon Deacons have made some serious ground over the years. We'll see if they'll take another step forward this year. North Carolina, first year under Mike Shaw after Joe Segula retired at the end of his long-term tenure. One of my favorite folks in volleyball. They'll also have Duke here at home before they play a visit to Miami in the midweek October 4th. For North Florida, they've got Stetson, FGCU, Jacksonville. They'll be at Lipscomb, and then they come back to Tallahassee. Or actually, they welcome Florida AM and out of Tallahassee to Jacksonville. And there's Kristen Wright, the head coach of the Ospreys. I mentioned earlier in the show, Madison, that she is a proud San Diego Ferrero. San Diego went to the Final Four a season ago, and she told me before the match, she said, you bet I was out there. I was sitting with all the other alumni. Now, she also is a little conflicted. So she was at San Diego. She was an opposite there from 2001 to 2004. And that 2004 team really is the team that set the tone for the Ferreros moving on. It was the first time they went undefeated in WC 
CC play. They won a couple of conference titles before that, but that undefeated mark meant a lot, and it really catapulted that program into where it got under Jennifer Petrie last season. Just a tremendous story where the Toreros, and a lot of it came from Kristen Ryan and her teammates back in 2004. That was so well said, and you know, just her credibility is through the roof. The players have to trust everything she says because that resume as a player that she has is so impressive. As for that 2014 that she was on, won the conference title, went to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament. So she said with a grin, she said, I guess we're second best team now. <laughs> the Ospreys really come into their own here in this third set. They're hitting north of 400, and Sky Eats has come into her own in this match. Six kills on 10 swings. You gotta love it when a player comes from off the bench, and they come in so confident, hitting 600. Those are such fantastic numbers. And it's, it hasn't, she hasn't even missed a beat, it seems. She's joined now in the front row by Maddie Snyder, who, as you mentioned, the leading scorer on the floor for both sides. Also a season and career high for her as the ace serve floats in by the Knolls. That's Kenna Phelan with just a deep, flat float serve. UNF really struggling with serve receive. They've got two players in the back row right now. And Kella, Kenna Phelan's serve is just such a good float serve. White with an out of system ball puts it down for the kill. Mahalia White. Out of system ball off the net, just powering through to that deep corner. And so North Florida hitting 444 in this third set is on a bit of a run. Talk about picking it up. Out of the middle, is it down? McFall says yes, but our refs say no. The Ospreys do have one challenge remaining. They're gonna use it right here. That's smart, you're getting really late into that game. I thought it could have tagged the line. That's just too close for you not to challenge. Kristen Wright challenging whether or not the ball was in or out. North Florida challenged whether or not Florida State touched the ball on the block back in the first set. The call stood. So this is their final challenge unless we get to a fifth set and also unless she is correct. Some of the things that can be reviewed within the NCAA's challenge system, whether or not a ball was contacted by a player, that was the substance of their first one, or whether or not a ball was in or out, that is what they're looking at here. Also, whether or not a player was in the net, whether or not there was an illegal back row attack, or whether or not a server committed a football. I didn't see a touch on that ball. The block just a little late. I don't know, it's hard from that angle. Now again, within the context of any point, they can look at what the coach wants to look at and anything else that unfolds. So they're challenging whether or not the ball was in or out. But Kim Wisham is wanting to see all the different angles, and I think she's looking for the angle we've got right here to determine whether or not the ball was touched. I believe at that point, with the, with the initial query being whether or not the ball was in or out, if she's asking whether or not the ball was touched, I believe the suspicion there for me would be she's going to say the ball was out. Now, did Florida State touch it is the question. Yep, you're right. From this this point right here, the ball does look out. It was a good call to challenge it. It is too close to call. Every point counts here as we near the end of this third set. Looks like it could have tacked the outside of the line. I've said this a bunch, but I, I'm, I'm glad I'm not a ref. And if it touches any part of that line, it's in. Mm -hmm. 
So both pieces to the puzzle are close and could be in play here. We've got a fantastic crew on this. Look at all these angles zooming in from everywhere. And so Kim Wisham just came over and told us that really despite all those angles, and they're all really good ones, it's just so close. And when it's that close, how indisputable is it? She told us it's gonna stand and there's the decision. Point to the Knolls. North Florida is out of challenges and they trail by five in a set they must win. Yeah, it's not, it's not indisputable, but really North Florida needed that point. They had some momentum. A lot of their setter hitter connections were clicking. They picked up their hitting percentage. They really needed that point to get back in the game. Would have been from 21-16 to 2017, and now there's an ace serve by Addie Holtquist, and just like that, a lead that was five that could have been three has gone to six. Look at that. Florida State with six aces on the night. North Florida was zero. That makes all the difference, and it's the same spot. Addie Holtquist, so good. And that was six aces in the set. That's seven in the set, nine in the match for the Knowles. Oh my goodness, that is fantastic. Addie Holtquist with two right there. Florida State's two points away from the match. Holtquist to send it in again. It's another really good one. Now a one-handed dig, Gayona couldn't quite get to it. That was a great deep tip by Big Knight, seeing the open court, and tipping it deep down the line. And so the lead is back down to six. North Florida has played a very strong brand of volleyball here in set three, hitting 381. There's an ace serve. And the Ospreys are off to a good start. The point I was about to make, Madison, they're gonna need a whole lot more of that. They're gonna need to be relatively perfect as Chris Cole calls timeout. Exactly. From this point on, you cannot afford to get aced. You can't afford to be under the net. You can't afford to touch the net. You have to play clean volleyball to get back in this game. And it's possible. I've seen it happen many times. I've seen it happen by a deficit more than this. You just have to be clean. And so, match on the line for North Florida. Florida State's trying to close it out in the three. In fact, the majority of Florida State's wins this season have been sweeps. And so when they get on the board and they get on you early, they get on you often, we'll take another look at what's at stake. North Florida again seeking their first win against the Knowles. Florida State on a three-match losing skid. They're trying to keep from it becoming four. And it's looking more and more like, although it's not an absolute thing at this particular moment, we don't want to count the Ospreys out. It's looking more and more like they are going to be able to avoid that if they can close out strong here in that vaunted red zone. Exactly. You know, we've talked about this a lot. How interesting is it that when they win, they usually win in three sets. And I think that comes a lot from mental maturity and confidence whenever they're swinging efficiently, whenever they're getting kills effectively, whenever that ball is in system, they have more confidence that they're able to win faster. And we talked about that at the beginning of the game, and now they're doing it here today. Sean Davison, Madison Fitzpatrick, Kylie Brennan on hand for the Ospreys and the Knowles. And North Florida needs a run. Fill him out, puts the Knowles on the doorstep with match point. Coach Poole called Philomawa his hardest hitter, his strongest hitter as far as power and strength is concerned. And I mean, that swing was so powerful, I agree with him. Ella Gayona to send it in. Nice pass, McFall got the kill. McFall's had a good day today. That's her seventh kill in the match. Tied with her fellow middle Maddie Boyd pacing the North Florida club. McFall loves that deep cross body swing. It's been very effective in an open area of the court for her. McKnight to serve it in. Snyder on a career day, puts an end to it, and the Knowles sweep North Florida here in Tully 
Jim. Snyder, her 10th kill of the match.